Time to catch up with David from Geek Town, our resident expert on all things TV and movies and gaming, you name it. David from Geek Town, he, he's seen it, he's done it. David, <laughs> how are you and what's new on TV at the minute? I'm very, very well, thank you. It's uh, been a busy week on TV or busy month on TV. We've had a couple of big finales over the last seven days with The Mandalorian and Picard both coming to an end for their latest seasons anyway. Uh, well, Picard sort of finishing, finishing, and Mandalorian coming to an end for now, I think. Mandalorian, I think, wrapped up really great. That was that was superb. Really finished off the kind of arc with Mando and Grogu. Um, that, that was just beautifully done, really nicely put together. I don't know exactly when they're going to come back to those characters. It sort of feels like they may be looking at doing something slightly different when they move forward with that because of the way that kind of ended but that's been really really good Picard was phenomenal this third season if you're a fan of the original Next Generation Star Trek really worth going to watch that third season I, I would ignore the first two seasons and just jump into the third because uh, it, it really is a love letter to, to Next Generation that um, they wrap it up beautifully there's a whole bunch of really beautiful little easter eggs in that entire season it's well written it's lovely seeing that cast come back you've got these interesting like little misdirections in it in terms of who the big bad is potentially ends by setting up another spin-off although they haven't officially confirmed that there's been talk of a thing called star trek legacy which follows sort of the children of some of the next generation cast and and it's sort of sets that up as a possibility but they haven't officially ordered that one yet we have got a number of new star trek series coming uh, starfleet academy which is is set at starfleet academy we've got new seasons of discovery coming strange new worlds lower decks and they just announced that michelle yo is coming back on a movie that they're making for paramount plus called section 31 which has her coming back playing her character of Empress Giorgio. That I'm really looking forward to as well. So there's lots of stuff coming in uh, the Star Trek world. In terms of new things, uh, The Diplomat has landed last week on Netflix. It's billed as a political thriller, and I didn't know much about it going into it. It's far more of a sort of comedy drama, tonally close to something like Succession. And something that I'm really keen on seeing right now the Super Mario movie. What are the reviews of that like? Have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet. I'm like Mario, but I'm not a huge Mario fan. One of my co-hosts on the Geek Town Radio podcast has been and seen it. Really rather enjoyed it, said it was fun. My personal feeling of it was it, it's a slightly odd choice picking Chris Pratt to voice Mario <laughs> when Charles Mamet who is is Mario uh, and has been the voice of Mario for years is like right there I've been told that it is a really quite fun movie you know could have done with a bit more sort of older content to sort of cover the wider audience of Mario rather than being completely sort of aimed at kids but overall okay Right, at the moment, we're speaking with David from Geek Town. He's our expert on TV, on movies, games, and all that fun stuff. David, what's big in gaming at the moment? The thing that I would love to be able to talk to you about is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, but it's not out for another couple of days yet, and I'm, I'm desperate to start playing it, because this is the follow-up to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Third-person, galaxy-spanning action-adventure game that follows the story of Cal Ketris, who is a Jedi, and it's sort of set prior to the sort of Mandalorian in the timeline, sort of post-Revenge of the Sith. So that is, is something that I've been very much looking forward to being able to sort of pick up and play, but it's, it's like out on the 28th, so we've got like a few more days of that to, to wait for yet. There is a game which has just dropped today, which I may have mentioned before, but uh, Stranded Alien Dawn, which is a base building game, which as we established early on, I do love these base building games. Likewise. Yes. It's from Helmet Games, who are the people that made the Tropico series and Surviving Mars. 
and Frontier, who are the people that made Planet Zoo and Planet Coaster. And um, it's a planetary survival sim where you have a small group of people that land on this alien planet and you start off with nothing but a few basic supplies and then you have to chop down trees and plants, hunt, farm, research new technologies and build a base to have them survive on this planet whilst they're fending off the sort of alien wildlife and weather and that sort of stuff. It's been in early access for quite a while but it officially launches today so that is up and uh, it opens with three different scenarios. The crash landing scenario which is the one that they originally started with which is as it sounds a group of survivors crash on a planet you've basically got to keep them alive until they can get rescued they've introduced two more scenarios as well one which is a farming scenario which is a group of farmers that have bought this one-way ticket to this uncharted territory outer world and they set up this little trading post and want to make enough money to be able to buy the planet that they're farming on and they the one that comes out with the launch is a military outpost scenario where they've got uh, a team of adventurers and soldiers and scientists and they have to defend the base from threats from the hostile alien world and that introduces things like mechs into the game as well so you can get like big mech armor and that sort of stuff to be able to sort of help out and things but i've been playing that in early access for quite a while it's really really good it's well put together if you're playing on pc there's a lot of mod support for it as well so the community themselves are also expanding things with their own scenarios and their own additions and that sort of stuff that stranded alien dawn it's out now on pc and console so that's worth going to pick up as well legend as always thank you so much david from geek town and you can find out more at geektown.co.uk or download the podcast and we'll catch up with him again next month